So we're now all set up to submit this form. We can enter an email address, we can enter a message, and we can go ahead and generate a hash and store the message alongside this. And then later on we can email it to someone, they can click on that link and we can look up by that hash. But let's focus on just storing this in the database first of all. So what do we need to do? Well, over in our home.twig file, at the moment we're not posting to any particular action. And that's because we don't have a root set up to be able to post. So let's quickly set this up now. Rather than a get request, we're making a post request to this. And this is going to be forward slash post. You can call this whatever you want though, it really doesn't matter. So we have a normal closure just here with the items we see here. So we have request, we have response, and we have arcs. So what we're going to do now is set the name for this root, and that will allow us to reference it within our home page. That means that if the URL changes, we don't end up having a hard-coded URL like forward slash post in here. And that's the benefits of roots. You can actually give them names, and then you can change the URLs around without affecting the rest of your application. So we're just going to call this send, but of course, feel free to call it whatever you like. And inside of here, we can now generate our hash, we can store it into the database, and we can redirect the user back to the home page. So just while we're at it, let's set a name for this as well. So this is home, just so we, when we do redirect, we can generate a path for that, again, rather than redirecting to forward slash. So the first step then is to grab the parameters that have been posted. So to do this, we use the request object that's passed in, and we say get params. You can also use get param and then give the name, for example, email, but we'll store these up here so we can just use them down here a little bit more conveniently. So let's now generate a hash. And to do this, I'm just going to use the unique ID function. I'm going to pass true for more entropy, and then I'm going to MD5 hash this. These don't have to be super unique because we're physically deleting them after we're done. So it's unlikely that two are going to ever be the same. So now let's uh, set up a prepared statement to get this stored. Remember, we are taking user input and putting it into a query. So a prepared statement means we're pr protecting against SQL injection. So all we do is say this DB, we already know, we just set that up in the last part and we say prepare. So here it's just a simple query to place this into the database. So it's insert into messages, that's our table name. We're putting the hash and the message in and the values here are going to be hash and message so we're using placeholders with colons at the start so this won't actually execute anything at this point but we now need to execute it passing in them values and this will be stored so we just say message execute we pass in an array of values and that is hash which we'll replace in a moment and message which we'll also replace so the hash is pretty straightforward, just comes from up there where we generated it. And the message is just params message. So this get params method on the request object will return an array and we can just access the keys like this. And this relates to the name that we gave this. So we gave this a name of message and this a name of email. So uh, we can use that later on when we actually send the email. So all that's left to do is redirect the user back to the home page, which happens to be our form. So all we do is we return response with redirect. And now we want to generate a path for the home page. So to do this, we use app router path for, and then we give the name of the route that we want to redirect to, which is forward slash. So this is the name of it. We'll redirect to forward slash. So we just type home in there. And that means that whenever you change this, say to home, your application will work in exactly the same way because we're generating the path from here. So that's all done, but there's a couple of problems. One app isn't available in the scope of this function just here. So what we need to do is at the end of here, say use app. That's remember the variable that's set inside of bootstrap just here. So we also need to update our form just here to generate a URL for that new post route. And this is a little bit different. We have a helper with inside of our 
twig templating. And if we cast our mind back to when we set up our views, that's this add extension part here. We have a twig extension. If we go and open this, you can actually see here, if we go down, we've got path four and base URL. Now we're not using base URL. We're using, if we look at our bootstrap file, we're using the URL that we set in our config. But basically twig extension will give you access to helpers within your views. So to output something in Twig, we just use double curly braces and we just use the path for function in here and we give the name of the root again. So if that root name changes or the path changes, this will just update to reflect that. So now we can go back to our form and we can test this out. So I'm going to type in an email address, type in a message, hit send, and we see we're redirected back over in our database you can see that that has been stored. So we've now managed to submit the form, store a message, but we obviously need to send the email off now. So let's jump over and do that next.